Ray Dalio's firm, Bridgewater Associates, just exited its position of Alibaba. And the question is, how should we be using this information to determine if Alibaba is still right for our portfolios? And that's what I'm going to dive into in this video. So guys, smash that like button, subscribe if you're new, and of course, drop a meow in that chat. You're watching more money. Let's get it. What's up, guys? And let's dive right into this one. So you can see here that Dalio's Bridgewater exited Alibaba, JD.com, NetEase, Billaby, and DD Global in an approximate US $1 billion sale. However, notice that Bridgewater's All China Weather Fund is still a believer in NEO, Xping, Li Auto, and Baidu. I just highlighted Baidu because that's one that I'm going to be building a model on very soon. And so it doesn't necessarily mean that this is a position ultimately on investing in China. They're still investing in certain industries. I would say that the EV industry might be a little bit more risky from my perspective, but that's just because of a level of ignorance that I have in the EV industry. I don't know who's going to win here, but I also haven't spent a lot of time looking into it to see who the potential winners could be. And so just a little bit more detail into the sale, it looks like Bridgewater sold seven and a half million shares of Alibaba at the end of the second quarter as shown in the 13F filings. But keep in mind that they could have just transferred those shares into Hong Kong listed shares. But the other thing that could be happening here is that hedge funds could be bullish on the Chinese economy as a whole, but temporarily reposition their portfolios into the areas that they feel have the best momentum. Now, I'm one person to say, but I actually truly believe that the YouTube audience that follows this channel is of the smartest people in the investment community. And so there was an answer in the comments that I believe is way better than any way that I would phrase it. So you can see here that a Reddit reader asked if I had any thoughts on Bridgewater dumping the entire holding of Alibaba. And notice that Thomas came back and responded that hedge funds have a different mindset compared to individual investors. At Bridgewater, they probably think Baba will be under pressure for the rest of the year considering Chinese economy's low trend and international relationship issue. It's not a coincidence that they also sold out of JD, which represents consumer spending, but they increased Baidu and the EV sector. At Bridgewater, they think that they can make more money for their customers this way. And that makes a lot of sense because what they could believe in this situation is that the EV space provides more momentum than the consumer spending space, which of course makes a lot of sense in light of the fact that we have a rising interest rate environment in the US or North America in general, or I guess in the West in general, with slowing consumer spending. So of course, slowing consumer spending would obviously decrease exports being sent out of China, which of course would cause a decline to the Chinese economy. However, at the same time, governments are still providing incentives for the decarbonation of society. And so there's still going to be incentives for people to purchase electric vehicles. So I see the thesis here being made by Bridgewater. And I don't think what the thesis is, is a bet against Alibaba. What I really think it is, is a bet for EVs. That's a space that's largely out of my circle of competence. And so you don't really see me talking about electric vehicle makers. That's why I haven't covered Tesla or the like. Now we know that it's likely not a bet against China for Bridgewater. However, how do the institutions really feel about investing in China as a whole? And a year ago, I actually downloaded an article by Franklin Templeton Investments, where they sort of laid out their thesis as to why they believe that investing in China is rough right now, but why they still remain bullish. And I want to share that with you. So you can see here that this was written a year ago, but the story remains the same. The tech industry regulatory pressures and decisions made by the CCP regarding zero COVID policies and the property sector remain overhangs over investing in Chinese businesses. And so Franklin Templeton went on to say that China has introduced recent regulatory changes targeting specific industries, which has led to some heightened market volatility. And going into their article, I just went into the area that I feel is most important. The CCP is looking in China to modernize their economy into a modernized socialist economy. And Templeton noted three development features that seem to be key, which were the common prosperity feature, the green development feature, and the independence in technology industries feature. However, I did cross out common prosperity and green development. And really what this shows is how quickly things are changing in China. So with respect to common prosperity, it's not mentioned anymore. I think in the last big meeting of the CCP, it was mentioned only once. And so it's not a thing anymore. At least I don't think so. 
And uh, a lot of people that follow China are also saying the same thing. The other thing is with respect to green development, as soon as they started having rolling blackouts, they turned on all coal fired plants. And so I do believe that green development is still in, don't get me wrong there, but I think it's moving at a slower pace because they have sort of have to manage not having blackouts in the country as well. Now note that Templeton mentioned that escalating geopolitical tensions is an additional factor in the current regulatory cycle. Chinese ADRs, and this goes to the last point where it's the independence of key technologies and industries, Chinese ADRs will be required to allow US regulators to audit their financials, otherwise risk eventual delisting, raising Chinese government concerns that sensitive data could be shared with the US government. Now, keep in mind, I've made videos on this previously, that the Chinese government is making concessions to allow the US governments to sort of alleviate their requirements of having access to audit data. They have started sort of like a three tier process, or they are starting that three tier process to allow certain companies to allow access to full audits. So we'll see how this plays out. But I don't see a full delisting of at least Alibaba in this situation, but we'll see how this plays out. Now, here's Templeton's investment thesis. They believe that these companies, especially these tech companies, will create value offering higher efficiency or better user experiences. They do believe that the headwinds facing internet companies at the moment are just largely operational. And there's no obvious alternative for the existing digital economy, which I absolutely agree with. Beijing is incentivized to encourage the digital sector. And in fact, the Chinese, the CCP actually came out and said the same thing. And so the challenge is, is that after this period of intense regulatory action, Franklin Templeton expects that the sector will resume its growth, albeit at a slower pace than before, as the problems Beijing perceives are rectified. However, the question is, when does this end? And it seems to be that a year later, people are starting to sort of get a little bit antsy about it and are exiting their Alibaba positions. If you look at the top companies that are being purchased by super investors, Alibaba has largely fallen out of the top 10. So it tells you that the market is sort of giving up on purchasing Alibaba in this environment because they're uncertain about what's going to happen over the next three to five years for Alibaba. Well, for value investors like myself, it's a perfect time to buy in using cash secured puts at a net purchase price of $70, I'm more than happy to load up on the security. The other thing is Alibaba is a cash generator. And so they're just going to be buying up shares that are grossly undervalued, causing an accretion effect to the shareholders that are willing to weather out this challenge. And Franklin finishes off by saying, what I believe is that ultimately Chinese internet companies contribute to a significant proportion of economic growth and employment and play a pivotal role in the government's technological goals. I could not have said that better myself. However, I can illustrate it in a way that makes a lot of sense. So this is from Alibaba's Investor Day. This is what they describe as their ultimate strategy and positioning. And so, of course, you can see that Alibaba is the Chinese economy. On the bottom left, you can see that those recent big bets really help people live better lives and emerge from poverty, especially that Tao Sai Sai product that they have. Sunart is a recent acquisition of Alibaba and it pushes their presence in the grocery space. Fresh Hippo is actually my favorite company of all of the Alibaba companies. Just search Fresh Hippo on YouTube to see what it's all about. And of course, Ellie.me provides flexible employment in a slowing economy. The gig economy is very important for workers. I actually demonstrated this on the channel by doing 250 deliveries for Uber Eats. And I actually showed you how you can quickly make $20 an hour net of all costs in the city of Toronto, including vehicle depreciation. So why does that matter for society? Well, we have sort of frictional unemployment. So there's always people that are being fired and then looking for another job. And in those situations, unemployment benefits or your sort of payouts when you get fired may not necessarily cover all of your expenses. Sometimes people run into certain situations where they need additional cash right away. Right now, they don't want to liquidate their portfolios or whatever it may be. Well, by having the ability to just jump in your car and start making $20 an hour right away is a big deal, especially for people on the lower end of the socioeconomic scale. And so I showed how it can be done. 
and all i really had to buy was a pizza bag because pizza operators would not let me deliver their pizzas without having a pizza bag and then i bought a food bag as well so the investment was like a hundred bucks but i immediately started making uh, $20 an hour and I'll link to those videos if you guys are interested that's early on in this channel more than a year ago now note guys that I still remain a bull on Alibaba I actually released a new model on the company where I now started forecasting out revenue and earnings at the most granular level based on their new disclosures and so for those of you that are invested in Alibaba I think it's very important to get access to that model and really think about how you fall on the growth trajectory for those individual segments now the one thing that I do want to point out to you guys is that before I go into the valuation of Alibaba, please take a second to subscribe to the channel if you already haven't. The channel gets four fifths of its views from people that haven't subscribed. And so one of the ways to really help the channel grow is just by hitting that red subscribe button. And so please do it if you have the opportunity to. Now going into the valuation for Alibaba, this is their free cash flow per share valuation net of their forecasted stock based compensation. I don't think any YouTubers are really taking this into consideration, but I believe it's important and it should bring down your valuation. And so with taking the stock based compensation out, you can see that I'm valuing the company at approximately $300 per share. And so with the current share price of $94 per share, you can see how Alibaba is very cheap at a third of its intrinsic value. So if it continues to fall, I will absolutely consider tripling down on this. And I've already explained to you guys how I'm looking at tripling down on Alibaba. There are lots of opportunities right now. And although the opportunities are becoming fewer because this past month, the stock market just roared. And so, I'm buying less right now, but I do believe that the market might continue to come back down. And if it does, and Alibaba continues to come back down, if it's trading in that $80, $70 per share area, I absolutely will triple down with cash secured puts. Hey, if I can get a net purchase price of $50 or less, I will absolutely back up the truck. Now, how do you get access to that new and shiny Alibaba model. Well, you can get access to that model at the lower tier of the Patreons. And so I'll put the link in the description below. Now, the other thing that I did mention in this video is that last year I did Uber Eats for this channel. In fact, I did a four part series on that. And if you sort of want to get an idea on how to make $20 an hour right away using Uber Eats, you can get to that video series right here.